So welcome back to Stu's Structures. We're here to start an extra build on the side just to have something for a couple of Tuesdays. I don't know if it'll take a week or two, but stay tuned for a good build. Welcome back to Stu's Structures. I was asked by one of my viewers out there to uh, build something. That I got. He didn't ask me to build it for him or anything in his comment. Uh, maybe he's just wanting to see how to go about building one. And it's not that complicated. But anyway, he asked me to build a fire tower. And I got to thinking about it and, you know, it's something I can use on my layout in something in the background, some of the mountain scenes anyway. Uh, I mean, it, this takes a whole lot of plastic for the steel in this structure. And, you know, I'm going to use some oversized stuff because that's just what I have the most of. I don't really want to spend a whole lot of money putting in, you know, into this structure because it's it's a background structure to me and it's not a priority right now for me to build but I'm gonna go ahead and do this and on the side while I'm working on my other videos and probably post these on Tuesdays just as an extra video so we're gonna start on building a fire tower let's just jump into this and I'll show you how to begin now I don't have a whole lot of pictures of this structure uh, you know I went online and you have to pay and get subscriptions to a lot of pictures and Google didn't really have any decent things that were similar to what I wanted to build but I did find this one then I just took this part of it because it shows you most of the structure I mean most of this is angle you know just angle iron various sizes mostly pretty pretty small for you know what overall makes up this structure but under this you can also see the framing for the floor as well and the fact that it has an open walkway around the outside but the building on top is the same size as where the steel comes up from the main structure basically and then the roof overhangs the walkway a little and you can see the stairwells coming down. A couple of the different towers that I see, the stairwells are mainly on the inside. On this one, they're all on the inside except for that one open great platform on the very top one. And it sticks out beyond the, uh, the structure, but most all the, well, all the rest of them on this structure and most structures, they're all on the inside for the stairs like this. Now this comes down and sits on some concrete pylons that are, you know, a little narrow at the top compared to the bottom. And, you know, I don't know what kind of a footer this really had. The picture shows them about two or three feet tall sticking out of the ground that this iron connects to. I mean, I know from working on commercial steel buildings that a five-floor uh, steel building you know, it comes down, you don't really see the concrete on top, but the footer for a, a beam that's five stories tall is 16 foot by 16 foot by 16 foot, you know, with a lot of iron in it to give it good structural support for that tall of a building. And of course, bigger buildings are more than that. You know, I decided to go ahead and I'm gonna make each of these main sections of these 10 foot tall and I'm going to go ahead and make this 50 foot up to the floor of my tower. So, you know, that's a place to start and some basic information to go from to get started anyway. So to begin with, I just want to get a basic outline of how the building is going to be. So I draw a line at the bottom, and this is basically the ground line. And then the line up through the middle is just 90 degree to that, and that is the center line of the structure. Then I figure out about how wide my bottom I want it to be, and I decided, well, okay, 24 feet is, is plenty of wide, I think, for this. It's hard to tell from any of the pictures exactly what the dimensions would have been. And then if I want to go 50 feet up that center line, I need to come through and mark every 10 feet where each of those uh, sections would be at and where the floor for the building would be up above. And then I drew a line where that floor would be. And after looking at the structure, I, I'm not sure how wide the building is on top, but I decided I'm going to make my building on top 15 feet wide. 
So I come out and mark the outer area of, of the sides of where that building will be. And then that gives me the points at the top. And then with my 24 uh, feet points at the bottom, I can draw a line between those. And that gives me the outside uh, edges of the structure going up the sides of the tower. So basically, that's the shape of the basic base of the tower itself. And from there, you know, at each of those 10-foot markings, I have a main beam that goes across from one side to the other on all four sides. And that's the main structural support for the tower itself. And then there's a lot of smaller, you know, connecting pieces for structures as well. Now these are angle pieces and there's, you know, two of those on each of those 10 foot sections going up the tower. And that would have given it, you know, diagonal bracing to keep the wind from buckling it diagonally. And then there's these 90 degrees off of that one up to the corners of the 10 foot pieces as another brace that are on these towers. And most of the towers seem to be made with this real similar bracing. So this design seems to be similar throughout a lot of the towers. And then there's this other smaller piece that comes off, you know, parallel to the ground from that junction of that out to the outside tower as well. And basically, that's all the framing that's on each of the four sides of this tower. Now, I decided to go ahead and lay out the top on this. And I, I went ahead and, you know, the 15 foot includes three foot walkways on either side. And with an eight foot, you know, room in the middle of it, I just drew this as a basic dimension for the room. Now on the sides of the braces of all these, there's plates where these come together that bolt all this together to strengthen the joints in this. And these are the three braces that seem to be you know, on all the towers that I see. There's a small brace off the side of that small beam that just seems to be angle to angle without the brace. But I go through and figure out how many of each of those is on this one side of the tower and I have to multiply that by four because there's four sides to this tower and I get the total number of those plates that I need to use. Now I go through all of my angles and just find the different angle stock and stuff that I have to work with and you know I don't know what the real sizes for the angle in this building would be, but I'm just going to use what I have because I don't want to put a whole lot of money into this background structure for my, for my layout. So I'm going to see if I can come up with stuff that I already have to make this. So out of what I have, I have these here and you know, these are a pretty big angle. And they wouldn't work for most of the structure, but I think for the very corner posts that go up the five stories, I think they would work great. And then I have this next size down, which would work for most of the cross members and the angle braces on each side. And then, you know, for those extra couple little pieces on each side, I have enough of this angle here, I think, which is even smaller to use for a lot of those smaller braces. So once I have that figured out, you know, with my diagram, I'm going to come back and put these corner posts and just tape them down onto the diagram. And I'm going to let them run a little off each end and tape them down outside of my working area. And then where the cross members come for the first parts at each 10 feet, I'm going to come back and start gluing all those plates to the inside corners of those legs. And once I have both sides of that done, then I'll come through and start putting the main support cross members into each of those plates. And I'm just following this diagram underneath of it and using it as a template to do that. Then the second set of plates that I had made need to go in the, on that angle on the very centers of each of these angles. And that'll support the upright bracing. So once those are all in place, I come back and put all these angle braces, which would have kept the building from racking and, you know, twisting and that type of a thing. And I just start with one side, then the other side and get down, well, okay, this is going to work. And then I just start coming back and cutting all of those to go, you know, both sides of the building on each of the five floors. 
and I glue all those into place. You know, at first I just start by going up one side of the building because all the angles that are cut are cut the same way for each side. That allows me to do this without a lot of extra scrap, you know, small pieces. And then the last plate that we have glues onto all those angle pieces. And that allows for the next piece of angle or, you know, smaller angle to come back which glues into that plate and up to the corner where the angle braces come down and meet the main structure so I come back and cut all those and put all those into place and then I take it off the template and I cut the legs off at the top and the bottom and basically we have the structure to this point and this point in time now there's one other small brace that goes in these and here you can see it added from that same last plate we worked from out to the center of each of those 10 foot plate places on the outside angle on the corners and then I come through and you know start working and building the second one just the same as I did the first one I use the same template I use the same pieces because they worked out well the first time I built this so I'm doing the second side and I need two of these sides to, you know, make the main part of the building and then I'll scratch build each of those with the pieces in between them to make up the following two sides. And I'm just coming back the same as I built that other one and adding each of these pieces in, in sequence, and just building the whole superstructure the same as I did that other one. And then once we have this last angle done here, then that's, you know, two of those put together. So that's two of the main structure walls done. Now, you know, one thing I didn't think about, but these plates where they meet the side walls, I got to come back and trim a little bit of this out where these angles meet that so I can slide these plates down into that side wall. And I was going through and working on that and realized that, you know, all these angles, I tried to get the flat part to the upper side of all these. And this one I got on backwards. So I cut the angle side off of it and, and just re-glued it onto the high side of that so that all the angles are all facing with the flat part of them to the upward side of the, of the build. So there you have the first video in building the fire tower. I'm not sure if this will be a two or three video uh, build. I, I may end up having to order some more open grates for the landings for the stairs and maybe some stairs too. I don't know. I need to go through my stuff and see what kind of materials I've got on hand. Uh, I really wasn't wanting to spend a whole lot of money to build this, but I may have to order a couple parts or not be able to build it. I can scratch build some of it, but. The open grate platform would be very tedious to try to scratch build. Not that it couldn't be done, it could, but man, what an undertaking that would be. So in any case, thank you for coming back and sharing this time with me. Uh, if you're wanting to build a fire tower, you know, there's lots of different types of fire towers out there. And I, you know, of all the pictures I went through, the one that I'm building seems to be the main type of frame used on them. I mean, I've seen stone structures, there's, there's all kinds of wooden structures, there's a lot of various builds out there. Uh, but the majority of them that I've seen in the country, and I know from one that was located from a few miles from my house here for a long time, it was just taken down finally a few years ago. Uh, but it had this type of a steel structure underneath of it, too. I'm not sure how tall it was, but, you know, that's that's why I want, decided to go ahead and build this one as well. And it was kind of typical of a lot of them in the United States. I don't know about other countries, but, you know, the fire service would have, you know, used this in a lot of places. So, you know, that's why I went with this type of a structure. And, um, you know, I'm really pleased with the way it's going so far. And if you're out there and you're wanting to build one of these, or if you're the person that left me the message before, I, I don't remember the name. I didn't go back and look at who posted the, you know, that they wanted one of these built. But, uh, you know, I hope this gives you enough information to build one of these. You know, and whether it comes down to building one of these or anything, you know, mainly you just need to sit down and look at what it is you're trying to build. And then you decide, all right, well, what materials am I going to use? Sometimes that depends on what materials you have on hand. Uh, but, you know, what will replicate what you're trying to build? And on this one, I mean, you know, 
Wood would not have made a very good looking representation of steel, but plastic works really well and I do happen to have a lot of this angle on hand, so this worked out really well for this project. Uh, I am going to need some small I-beams for this and a few other things, but you know, we'll get into that, you know, part of it in the next video and maybe the third. I don't know if I'll need a th third or not, but uh, in any case, I hope this gives you the information on how to approach building something like this. Uh, there was a lot of these types of steel structures used in water towers and all kinds of things around railroads and in cities and on top of buildings for fire, water towers, and that type of thing. Uh, so this gives you an idea about how to go about building one of those types of structures. So I hope you're enjoying this. I hope you're grabbing some scratch build materials and starting to build something for yourself. And uh, just jump out there and have fun. Happy model railroading.